Today we gather again uh, on another great Easter day, a day to celebrate the risen Lord. Uh, I'm, I'm standing between two objects that are in the front of our church here to remind us, uh, and, and it's two kinds of altars. This altar is an altar uh, that reminds us of the many sacrifices leading up to Jesus, but it reminds us too that Jesus comes among us through his body and blood. Uh, but his body and blood were truly spilt on another altar, and that's the, the altar of the cross. Uh, and it's because of that cross that Peter writes uh, in his second chapter uh, of his first letter, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The most excellent thing that God ever did uh, was to die on a cross for all of our sins. Uh, and then to rise again, victorious over sin and death, so that we could all be his children. Children with a purpose, and that was to be his people and his priests. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. We're here to celebrate the great things that he has done in our life. Let us worship our Lord.
worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here.
God truly does never stop working. After Jesus rose from the dead, he did a lot of work uh, showing himself to people uh, before he ascended into heaven. And then he sent someone who would guide and lead and teach and, and be with us and live in our hearts, and that's the Holy Spirit. Uh, and, and with that Spirit package, we've been looking at the fruits that come from having the Spirit of God live in us. We are a holy priesthood, uh, not in a, a proud way, in a humble servant way like Jesus was. Uh, a priesthood is, is someone who connects God with people and people to God. And these fruits are uh, what helps that happen. Uh, today, uh, we take a look at uh, the fruit of patience. And, and we want to use a, utilize a passage of God uh, in terms of understanding how that uh, patience, what it truly means. And uh, from the Word of God, here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. Paul goes on to say, for, for that very reason I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display His unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe on Him and receive eternal life. You might want to get the kids ready because... Uh, Carly's here to share another message, this time focusing on the message of patience. Hi everyone, welcome back. Before we get to our lesson today, I was just making a quick snack. So, oh, I think it's done. Let's see here. I'm getting a little hungry. Oh man, I didn't wait enough time for the popcorn to finish popping. Now it's all full of kernels. I can't eat that. Sorry everyone, I wasn't showing much patience when I was popping my popcorn earlier. I should have waited until the timer went off and then I would have had a bowl full of popcorn instead of a bowl for, full of kernels. And I wouldn't be complaining that I'm not eating my snack right now. But that brings us to our next fruit of the spirit that we're gonna be talking about, which is patience. Patience means is to stay calm and to not complain. So. An example would be, have you ever been in a long car ride with your parents and you ask, are we there yet? And most likely your mom and dad are going to say, not yet, hopefully soon. Well, instead of saying, oh man, and complaining that you wish you were there, you could fill your time with some other, something to do to kind of make the time go faster and to have some patience. Well, I'm going to demonstrate patience another way. A couple of weeks ago, I planted some seeds. And instead of screaming, hey, grow already, I can just have patience and wait. And eventually, my seeds will start to grow and they will turn into a beautiful flower. The flower is gonna grow eventually anyways, so I might as well feel good about myself and have some patience. And so whenever you feel like you're anxious or you're not really calm, you can just ask Jesus to help fill you with his spirit of patience. So let's say a little prayer real quick. Dear Jesus, when I am excited about something and have to wait, fill me with your spirit of patience so that I do not complain. Amen. Thanks everyone for joining me today as we talked about our fruit of the spirit, patience. I went back and I popped my popcorn for, and I waited the full time and I showed my patience and now I get to enjoy a bowl full of popcorn. And today I want you to show some patience towards your mom, especially on this special day. Happy Mother's Day and join me next week as we talk about our next fruit of the spirit. I'd like to show you a picture as we begin here today uh, of a fruit. Uh, I had never uh, see, I, I wouldn't know what this kind of fruit was, and I don't know how many of you do. Um, I didn't know what it was before this week, but I was delighted when I found out because I happen to like sushi. And this is uh, a fruit that I wouldn't even consider fruit, but I like eating with sushi, and that is uh, wasabi. And it's that green mushy stuff that can clear your sinuses, uh, when you enjoy 
uh, your sushi. But uh, the reality of this fruit is it's really, really hard to come by. Uh, in fact, it grows wild in Japan, out in the wild, and it, it, it's difficult uh, not only to find places where it grows, but then to harvest it. And uh, only 5% of the restaurants in Japan actually serve wasabi. And, and so you might ask then, what in the world are we eating with our sushi? Well, actually, it's, a, it's mustard uh, mixed with a European horseradish. And then uh, it's got green food coloring in it. Uh, and so the reason that is is because uh, if you tried to buy wasabi, it's very expensive. It's $300 a pound uh, versus apples, which run about average $2 a pound. Uh, but one uh, gentleman from Canada decided he was going to try uh, to raise wasabi uh, either in a greenhouse or in a field in Canada. And uh, after 30 years, he came up with the secret. And the good news is that you can buy that secret for a measly $70,000. Now, the bad news is it takes $700,000 to raise one acre of, or, or to get a field ready to raise wasabi. Uh, and then on top of that, the other bad news, you've got to wait over a year before you can harvest any fruit. Talk about patience. Uh, you know, some people would say that patience is as rare in our society as wasabi. And I'm here to tell you today that that's just not true. In fact, patience is truly at an abundance, even though we often don't utilize it. Or we might even make jokes like, Lord, give me patience and do it right now. Because we have trouble being patient. And yet God is the one who wants us to have patience. And God is the one who wants us to do His will, and that's to utilize the patience that He so freely gives. Paul says in Galatians about the fruits of the Spirit, about the Holy Spirit, that we already have the fruits because the Spirit lives in us. And because of that, we don't have to manufacture patience. We don't have to try to learn patience by growing with wasabi or, or doing something else that takes a tremendous amount of patience. No, today you and I have the ability uh, to be able to know that that is in us. Have you ever been around uh, those that practice patience? If you have, you know what a joy it is. It's, it's truly a joy to be around those people. They, they have less stress. And studies show that people with less stress are healthier. Uh, the, the studies that show that health and lack of stress go together. Who of us would not want to be and have more patience in our lives? But before we get into the conversation of, uh, of utilizing patience, because the reality is we have it, uh, but there's a difference of having it and then employing it, using it in our lives to bless others and, and be blessed ourselves. And in our passage today, in, in 1 Timothy, <clears throat> that I read just a, a moment ago, uh, this is a passage that actually talks about um, when, when, we're, when we're called by God, when we have this... Jesus, by the way, this is a confession of the Apostle Paul. He, he says, I'm the worst of sinners. And uh, while he was saying that, he, he also knew that this patience is, 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 a, is an enduring patience. It's a, it, it says that it, it's complete. Now, to understand what patience means, the word for patience in the Greek language is, is two meanings to it. The first part of the word actually uh, means to, to long. Uh, the second part means <clears throat> in anger. 
So long in anger, long anger, or uh, it takes a long time to get angry. The, the other way that it's translated and, and the meaning of it is that it's long in suffering. Long in suffering. And, and so as we uh, look at this meaning for us today uh, in our passage, it, it's, it's talking about uh, being long-fused versus short-fused. Uh, and, and we know we all have those places in our lives that we're short-fused. And uh, I, I can say mine has to do with things like stoplights. I, I hate stoplights. We never had any in, our, in the town I grew up in. And, and, and I, I can't stand it when I, I, I work at trying to time the stoplights. I even do <coughs> creative driving where I always do right turns as much as I can uh, to avoid sitting at stoplights. But uh, the reality is, when, when I get stopped by them, uh, I, I get frustrated. Uh, the other thing that, that is hard for me in, in is, uh, is at checkouts. You know, when, you, when I have to stand in line, and I always try to look to see which one's moving faster. It doesn't really matter because whatever one I get in, that's the one that slows down. Or you have that checker. You have that checker that uh, because my exotic fruit doesn't show up on their thing, they don't know what to punch in and they got to call back for someone to give them a price. Uh, you know, and, and it seems like everything can happen like that. <clears throat> and, and I don't find myself very patient and I can become angry. And there are numerous things that can cause us uh, to, to not be patient. And, and the thing is, <clears throat> people often say, that it's, they just can't be, be they, they can't stop from being impatient. Uh, and I'm going to tell you that that's just not true. We, we can stop uh, from being impatient. We can employ patience. God's given us the ability to do that. And, and here's the proof of that. When, and, and parents, you might uh, relate with this. Uh, as a parent, you're, you're yelling at the kids and then the phone rings and you go, oh, hi, how are you doing? Or it can go the other way, especially in those teenage years where you're grumping at your parents and you're upset, maybe even yelling, and then a friend calls and you go, oh, I'm glad you called. We ought to hang out. Everything changes. You look at each other, what's wrong with that? We can be patient. The thing is, we often choose not to employ patience in our lives because simply we don't want to. It's that old nature in us. We're focused on ourselves rather than serving the other person. You know, Jesus was extremely patient with the people that he was with and around, especially those closest to him. He was, he was so patient with Paul, and that's what Paul is talking about uh, in, in this lesson today. Because he actually said he was uh, considered to be a person that was a blasphemer. He, he was a, per, a per persecutor of God's people, of Jesus' followers. And he was a violent man. And, and then he says, Jesus was so patient with me. And, and it was a kind of patience that, uh, that, that actually, for the worst of sinners was unlimited. It had no bounds. It wasn't only a long fuse, but it was an eternal fuse that would not let his anger come even against Paul. Uh, you look at Judas. Look how patient Jesus was with Judas. He, was the, he held the money bag. He knew that Judas was stealing out of the money bag. He knew that he had a problem with money. He wanted to work with Judas. He loved Judas. And yet, Judas' demise was of his rejection of what Jesus truly came to be and do in this world. You know, Jesus' example of patience teaches us the importance that it plays. And, and patience is not a grim, gritting your teeth uh, kind of, uh, of forbearance, trying to muster up the ability to have it. 
No, it, 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 patience is simply the way God lives and the way God gives patience. It's a joyful mercy that, that comes from Him naturally. And because He has placed that in us, we have the ability in us, the power of the Holy Spirit to display that same joyful mercy to the people around us. In Jonah chapter 4, verse 2. Uh, by the way, Jonah was very impatient. Jo- Jonah was, God sent him to Nineveh. He had no patience for the Ninevites. He-, he thought they should just be wiped out. And so instead of going to Nineveh, uh, we all know he got swallowed by a fish because he got on a boat and headed the other direction. And when God finally got his... Here's here's what Jonah had to say after God forgave the Ninevites. He goes, And he prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my own country? That is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish. For I knew, and here he is, I knew that you are a gracious God. You're merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Yes. That's our God. That's the God who sent His Son who was the same way with all of those who were persecuting Him and wanted to nail Him to a cross. See, the reality is that um, that checker that, that I get so frustrated with that has to call in, there's a big picture here. And when we come into contact with people in our lives, even when, we're, when, when our, our patience is being tested, uh, the, the bigger picture is this checker is a, is a woman that has three children at home. And she's raising these kids by herself. And she's always working a full-time job. And now she's, she's working more hours to, to make more money. And she's putting her life on the line by being there behind the plexiglass during the COVID pandemic to serve me. And yes, she doesn't know all the prices because she had a crash training course because they were short of people and had to just throw her in there. See, there's a big picture to, to everybody's life. There's a bigger picture to me sitting at a stoplight and instead of just thinking about me having to wait a few moments to be able to look around and maybe pray for the people in the cars around me. Patience can be exuded in so many ways because of the Spirit that lives in us. We can afford to utilize patience because the true big picture is that we are strangers here. Heaven's our home. We have eternity. We can afford to be patient. We, we, we don't have to get that deal now on, on the internet because we're afraid. We don't have to react out of fear that we're going to miss out on something in this life because this life is nothing compared to the life that we're going to have forever. We don't have to zip around through the stoplights, through the checkout stands. It is when we refuse to be patient that we get ourselves in trouble. The Bible, this book, is full of God working with... In fact, all the people He worked with were impatient. And we can name one after the other. But I'm going to only pick one. It's going to be Abraham and Sarah. After he'd given them a promise, a promise that they would have someone that would carry on the promise of God saving the world and that that Savior would come from Abraham himself, they became impatient. Sarah offered his, her concubine, Hagar, to Abraham so that they could fix what seemed to be so slow about God. And we know the results of that. In fact, the results are still being played out today. You know, there are Arabs and Jews still at each other's throat over there. But regardless of all the fallout that that impatience caused, God still worked with Abraham. 
God still carried out His plan of salvation through Him. And it shows that He is patient with us. He's long-suffering. You know, there's only one letter between the two words anger and danger. And I don't think that's by mistake. One letter away. When we're impatient, we're in danger. When our anger is what's driving us, we're in trouble. In Proverbs 29, verse 11, it says, A stupid man gives free rein to his anger. A wise man waits and lets it grow cool. It's easy on our human nature to give free rein to our anger. And yet if we, if we stop and we employ the Spirit of God, if we employ the, the Spirit of patience, then, ah, when we have those moments, when we have those times, we know we're going to be more susceptible to not being patient. It's at those times that, first of all, first of all, we need to acknowledge when we're angry. But then we don't have to give it free reign. That's when we go to prayer. That's when our fuse is lengthened and we're able to do what God's will is and let it go. And so today, God wants us to do His will. His Spirit truly works in us when we allow it to work. See, patience is necessary to be the connectors of people to God and God to people. Patience is necessary for us to be able to minister to the people around us. You know, in this pandemic, when we're, when we're shut up in, in our homes and, and, and the kids might be getting on our nerves and our patience is, is really wearing thin, we still have the ability to be patient. You see, even though our patience wears thin, God's never does. God's is always there in abundance. You see, you can do this. You can do this. You, you can uh, exercise patience no matter what the circumstance. Because patience is in abundance unlike wasabi. Really, God's patience is in us. God, God's patience is there. His, he is long-suffering. He proved that when Jesus suffered even unto death on the cross. God is long in anger. In fact, it's ultimate. There is no fuse that burns out with God. And because of that, He forgives our sins. He reminds us that our sins are forgiven every day of our life. He treats us gently like a like a project in progress, a work in progress. And so when your patience is being tested, you can be confident that the Holy Spirit is there helping you to bear with one another in love. Because patience is an act of love. Amen. We pray. Gracious Father in heaven, you are such a good father. Um, we, we have had the privilege and we, we thank you that we have been able to, to experience the, the fruits of the Spirit uh, that you have given to us through the power of your Spirit. But we have, we've experienced these and we praise you that we've experienced these fruits from you yourself, especially your love. The love that has come from you in such a, uh, a powerful way through your son Jesus, the one who was the exact rep representation of, of who you are and your love for us. We thank you that he had loved us uh, with your heart even unto death on the cross. Lord, we thank you that he is victorious over sin and death. And, uh, and, and we ask you, Lord, to, 
help us to never take that for granted, that uh, you loved us enough to make us your children forever and ever. That is what brings us the true joy, the joy that we have to experience uh, it, no matter what's going on in our lives here. Lord, bless us with that joy uh, that can never be taken, one that will go with us even into eternity. Lord, we also thank you for uh, peace, the peace that comes, the peace that is different than any kind of peace in this world, a, a, a peace that's there in our hearts in all times and in all situations. Bless us, Lord, with your patience today, a patience that uh, we have experienced from you, one that is long-suffering, but one is also uh, long in, in not being angry with us. And in fact, your anger was taken out completely on the cross. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for, for taking that, that anger on yourself, that punishment, so that we could be free. And now we ask that you would use us in a special way, in every situation, with every person that we come into contact with to be long-suffering, for them to, uh, to be able to exhibit the peace and the joy uh, instead of anger and frustration. These are times that can cause us to, to be short-fused, and we ask that you'd help us to be long-fused as you have been with us. And Lord, we also thank you for uh, the blessing of being uh, a part of a bigger picture, the big picture of uh, your kingdom, your body, uh, at work together. Every, uh, every stone that has been put into the body of Christ, the building that is being erected, the church. We know, Lord, that it's difficult for, for those that are being persecuted around the world. We know that it, it, it's hard to be patient and, and at peace. And Lord, we pray that for those that are being asked to... Uh, to, to give up their family, to give up their homes, uh, to be persecuted and thrown in prison. Oh, Holy Spirit, you have brought the message of the Savior to Central Asia and swept many in that area into the kingdom of heaven. Let the word of God be brought to all who are spiritually hungry in that place, including the little children. Strengthen the weary and encourage them. Give them hope for the future. And, and, a, and Lord, a patience to endure what they're going through. Strengthen them, Lord. Transform their hearts, uh, the hearts of the, the informants against them and the police that arrest them and, and show them that Jesus is for them as well. Lord, today is a day that we, we thank and praise you for, for life. Life in uh, in Jesus, of course. But before we could really have that life in Jesus, we need we needed to have the life we live on this earth. And and you've blessed us with your ongoing creation through our mothers. We've all been blessed to have life, and we thank you for mothers that chose life for us. Lord, help them to know that they have been a blessing and a and an instrument of you to bring life to us, and we are thankful and grateful for that. Lord, wherever there uh, is tension between mother and child, wherever there has been hurt between them, bring your uh, healing power of forgiveness and love and reconciliation. Lord, may all experience the love of Jesus that can then be transformed into love for one another. We ask these things in the name of your Son, Jesus, who has come to bring life that we might have life to the full. In his name, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning, Dennis. Good morning, Pastor. How are you? Good. Great to have you with us today. You okay. know, uh, our, our topic for this week is... Um, you know, patience, and, and it's going to become apparent through our conversation why we ask you to, uh, for everybody, why we ask you to uh, 
be someone we talk to today. But first of all, man, you look really scruffy. What's what's with all the? Is that kind of a hold up thing? Yeah, yeah. You know, I just getting the mountain man luck from staying inside, but that's yeah. okay. You know, yeah. they uh, don't anticipate opening at least till the twelfth. So. <laughs> Goes goes with the cabin fever, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Except I don't have much cabin fever. We've gotten a lot of projects done around the house. So Okay. Well good. Uh, I'm glad you're weathering this fine. I just wanted to uh you know, start out with uh, an opportunity for you. I know you, you have a military background and we we are very grateful for uh your service uh to our country and, and to all of us. But could you just kinda share I know that that's a two-person thing there with you, with Roxanne, and if you could just share, uh, you know, how that goes together, you two uh, being there, and, and, and how you, you know, the amount of time, uh, what were your services like? Uh, well, let's start with Roxanne and I met in the summer of 68. So we've been together, oh my gosh, including high school, 52 years, wow. uh, which is a blessing. Yeah. Um, I graduated in 71 and went into the military right after that. I uh, wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but that felt comfortable. Came back, married her in 72, took her overseas with me, um, which was an experience. I mean, she'd never been that far away from home. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, of course, neither had I, uh, but uh, we made it through it. Um, found out in 70. 74 excuse me um, I had to do a three-year physical for the military we were stationed in Germany at the time and they said I had a heart murmur so they start doing all their checks uh, they send us back to Denver uh, in December of 74 have my first heart surgery in 75 January 75 so you know we're kind of like okay uh, but there's, you know, there's peace and there's patience. We still know what's going on. Um, get through that, stay in Denver till, oh my gosh, what was it? November of 77, when the government decided to send us back overseas to Germany. Once again, same area we were in. Uh, very blessed to have the same landlords, good friends. Um, this, is, this is in the Air Force, right? In the army. Oh, the army. Okay. Oh, don't insult me. No. Well, <laughs> I, I I just want to make sure everybody out there knew what branch you were in. Now, not now. I even know. <laughs> yeah. No. I I enjoyed it very much. Um, so we were there in headquarters uh, both times uh, with Seventh Corps, and then we in oh my gosh, November of '79. They decided that things had gotten a little bit worse with my heart. We did a checkup. They always kept tabs on me, no matter where I went. So we came back home. You know, you, you get patience through these things, and, and you know, it, you come back home, and you're thinking, okay, we got to have this right away. Well, then they give you 30 days leave to go home and see the family and everything before you, before you have surgery. So it's like, well, is this that big a thing or not? And then they had my second surgery in January of 80. Um, Backtrack just a bit because of the first surgery and the blood transfusions, I had hepatitis C. Mm -hmm. I got bad blood. So I still had that in me. Had my second surgery in January of 80. Doing well, doing well. Uh, got sent to Korea in 83. A young doctor over there saw me said, I can't take care of you here. Get the magic button and sent me home and put an end to my career because I couldn't go back overseas. Mm -hmm. So they medically retired me in October of 85. So I spent just over 14 years in the military. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Would, would do it again if I was young enough uh, and healthy enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, you know, during that time, uh, not only the surgeries, we had the endocarditis in 93, which is an infection around the pericardial sac of your heart. Um, my heartbeat wasn't good, so they did the cardioversions, the ablations where they go in and burn your heart 
to try and stop the the different rays and the cardioversion where they they actually stop it and then try and restart it to get it going again. Um, you know, so we did real well till '98, and they decided that uh, it was on Christmas Eve. Okay. <laughs> um, so they they said that you're not going home. And we said, well, what do you mean? They said, well, you're bad enough that we're not gonna let you go home. And I, we looked at each other and we said, well, if it's the last Christmas, I'll spend it with my family. So we went in right after Christmas on the Sunday. I told them I would be there and we were there. So 98, we did my third surgery and everything was fantastic. Um, we moved up here in 2007, you know, and everything was well. Went to uh, the heart hospital over here, saw the doctors there for a little while, and finally one of them says, there's nothing we can do for you. And I looked at them and I said, wait a minute, what are you talking about? And they said, there's nothing we can do. They said, but we know who can. So they referred us to Mayo. And that was a godsend. You know, and it was it was a, a godsend to come up here because in 98, they were deciding whether to send me to New York, to Mayo, or actually do my surgery in Denver. Well, the doctor that did the surgery had actually come from Mayo to Denver. So he knew what was going on, so he did the surgery. Um, so it was a blessing being sent here because we were closer to Rochester in case things were needed. Well, apparently they were. Um, as you know, I retired from work in March of 15, had my mill renone pump on me for three years, which the medicine assisted me with my heart functions so that I could live. Um, things progressively got worse. And as you know, we went in in August uh, 16, and here I am, January of 17, we got the new heart and kidney. So how long was it, Dennis, between when you found out you needed the transplant and, and you wore the pump to the point where you, you kind of went to the A-list and had to go in? Well, it was almost a year and a half, two years. Um, they gave me the pump. They talked to us about coming in and you know being put on the a-list and we thought no with the pump we're doing very well um we can stay on the b list be at home and still be at rochester in three hours which was one of their requirements mm -hmm. um you know in every checkup the doctors would go you know things are a little bit worse are you sure you don't want to move into the hospital well no we're not ready yet um we wanted to stay around the family and the church and, and everything our family, yeah. meaning the immediate family and the church family, as long as we could. But then it, it, but then it became a point where it couldn't wait any longer. They said, you need to be on the A-list. Yeah, they, uh, we went in, um, oh my gosh, what was it, in May, and they said, you know, you really need to consider coming into the hospital. Well, we came home, had a meeting with the family, and we said, this is what we're doing. Talked to the hospital. So in July of 16, no, August of 16, we went over into the hospital yeah. and sat there five and a half months. And that sitting there is actually living there uh, in a hospital room. Yep. And your, your bride uh, living in a well, at first, maybe uh, there was a place there she could stay, right? Right, right. Uh, we were but blessed. for family. Right, yeah. We were blessed with her nephew living in Rochester. So she was staying with him. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at first she'd come up on the weekends and still work full time. But, yes, I was, I was living in a room, um, one bed. I was able to have a desk, a refrigerator, and different things in there. but. You know, it, like you said, it's a room in a hospital. Yeah. And you've got to realize that. But, 
you can't let it get it to you. And so you get up and you walk and you do, you meet different people and, and you talk to them and stuff, you know, and, and through this whole thing, um, my patience has grown so much on, on just waiting on things and knowing that God's going to provide, you know, it, it's just a miracle that how he puts us in different situations, you know, what have I been four times in the hospital? and the patience in, in uh, how you talk to people and witness to them and things. I can think of a, a lady in 98, my last surgery in Denver. Um, she was in there. Her husband was in the hospital, and he was bleeding profusely out of the eye sockets, just ruptured all his vessels inside the eyes. And we sat down. We talked for a little bit, and I prayed with her and stuff. And, boy, it was just like something lifted away from her. Yeah. She was a, a whole different person, you know, and it's, it's just how you look at it. And the patience is just amazing. You know, I wasn't in a hurry in the hospital. I'd get up every day. Yeah. The doctors would come in and see you, you know, tell you what's going on, uh, whether you have tests, everything like that. But I wasn't in a hurry. It, it's not my time. Dennis, every time I, I, I would come in to see you, there would be a board there. Uh, and it seemed like you drew a lot of comfort and, uh, from that board. Can you say something about that? Uh, the board I did every day, it had a Bible verse on it. And it related to um, how the day should be for you. And I actually started to have doctors towards the end even though if they weren't assigned to me for that day or for that week, they would come in and check the board <laughs> to see what verse we had on there. And I remember Dr. Boylson, uh, who was one of them on the transplant team, he came in one day, Irish gentleman, great accent. He come in, he, he said, I, I had to see what the verse was for the day. And he read it and he says, I'm going to have to check this because I don't think that relates to the day. Well, he stopped in later in the afternoon and told me, he says, it was, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we had the verses that we did, uh, they could come in, and it was just a room that nurses and doctors would come into and feel comfortable. And um, other, other people that had family up in there waiting on transplants just felt comfortable coming in and talking to me. Um, I can think of Rick Byers, his wife, Tina, was up there with me, and you may have met them. Oh, yeah. Um, and she got hers on that Easter Sunday, <laughs> which was a miracle. But he was having a little <clears throat> struggle with his faith and his walk. And he'd come in in the evenings and say, hey, can we talk for a little bit? So we'd talk and stuff. And now he actually goes and gives speeches to groups about his witness mm -hmm. and how he, he walks now with the faith. Wow. So, you know, he, not only does he give you the patience, but you're there to witness to people to bring them to him mm -hmm. through this patience that he gives you. You know, and, and even after I got my transplant, doctors and nurses would come see me and check on me and, and everything. So, so through the through the uh, the fruit of patience that the Holy Spirit was able to work in you, uh, your family grew exponentially. Oh yes, yeah. yes, yes. And those they, doctors, nurses, uh, other patients mm -hmm. have become family. Yes, yes. Uh, we have family that live in Montana. The losses. Um, Kathy was her name and she was in the hospital with me up there and come to find out one morning that she had gotten her call for her transplant and she didn't want to go. She says, it's not my turn. Dennis has been here before me. He's got to go. Yeah. And, you know, so I talked to the family and I says, she's got to realize that it's a blood type and all the antibodies and everything else that you have to match up. It's not my turn. I still got people I got to talk to, you know. And he keeps 
bringing me back here so that I can talk to people and bring them. You know, it's, I love it. It's just amazing. I need to, I need to keep strong and, and get stronger, I should yeah. say. Yeah. And uh, keep working. Well, Dennis, it's, uh, it's a joy to hear, you know, how, how God has blessed you through the power of his spirit uh, with this one fruit. And there's others that go with it, the peace and, uh, and along with patience. But uh, I just thank you for uh, helping us be encouraged. No matter what the circumstances, we can uh, be blessed by the fruits of God's spirit. Uh, in that Holy Spirit. Let's uh, let's just have a, a time of prayer together as we uh, as we go today. Heavenly Father, what a glorious uh, testimony of you at work in one of your children, actually uh, a whole family of your children, but, but especially Dennis and Roxanne. And, uh, it took a lot of patience for her being the one that, that stood by, and she's got a story to tell too. And and it's a story that uh, has you in the middle of it. Lord, thank you for the blessing of, of the many, many people, the many lives that you touched through the power of your spirit, uh, through these uh, faithful uh, followers of yours, people that were able to uh, go through decades of dealing with, with heart issues. Uh, you can turn all things for good for those who believe on your name, and we give you honor and glory uh, in how you have done that in, in Dennis and Roxanne's life. Uh, Lord, be with the families that sacrificed uh, uh, their loved ones to be able for Dennis to continue his, his life, and many others that, that receive the gift of donors. Uh, there are so many blessings that uh, come when you're in the middle of what's going on. And so again, Lord, thank you. We praise you. And in Jesus' name, the one who gives the abilities of people that can do for Dennis what's been done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. I well, love thank you, dearly. brother. Uh, I'd give you a hug if I could. <laughs> Air hug. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but you know, I got to say that, that Roxanne's had great pressure, uh, patience through this whole oh, thing. Me too. Tremendous, tremendous. And it's just, it's just amazing how it works. And that's so a whole nother story. She could, she could fill a book. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. You know, well, uh, she's married to you, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Her title of the book, patience with Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you brother. Good day, brother. Take care. Love yeah. you. Love you too. Bye. Bye. You know, when Dennis was in the hospital uh, many times over throughout the years, when Dennis was in uh, getting a new heart and a kidney, uh, there were many, many medical people that uh, just fell in love with him and, and he with them uh, as brothers and sisters in Christ. And uh, I want to lift up all those that are, are caring for people uh, in a special way uh, today, the people in our medical fields. Let us pray. Uh, Lord, we know that these people uh, have great responsibility, but they have great desire to carry it out. So Lord, as they, as they put on their eye protection, we pray that you open their eyes to see your face in each patient that they care for. Lord, as they put on their mask, we ask that you, your words are on their tongue to speak your wisdom and comfort as they put on their gown. Please wrap your arms around them and give them strength to strengthen others. As they put on their gloves, we ask that you steady their hands to do your work as they remove their protective equipment. We implore you to remove any traces of the virus as they prepare to go home to family and friends. And when they wash their hands, please wash away any fears and doubts. Protect them, Lord, so that they may protect others. Grant them courage to do your will. Amen.
We not only need God, but the people in our lives need God as well. And He does work through our patience. And so I just ask that, uh, that you know and that you go with the love, the grace, the forgiveness. But most of all, uh, it's all born out of the patience of God in peace and in joy and mercy. Amen.